Hi, Charlotte. How are you? It's such a pleasure to talk to you. I actually went along to Sweet on Ponsonby Road last night and had a look at some of the works. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you for doing that. I appreciate that. Yeah, I love the concept of the music being entwined with the art. Are you a busy relaxer? Like, have you had a summer full of painting and art? (laughs) Um, You know, some of it, some of it. Um, I mean, we've had enough rainy days so that I can stay home and paint without feeling bad. (laughs) Um, You know, it's it, it has been a busy summer painting, but it's been a pleasure. I love I love working on art, encompassing music, um, and that's where it stems from. You know, my original passion was basically to try to see what my music looked like, and that's when I started painting. Is that how it started? You were listening to your music, and you thought, "How would this look as art?" Yeah, yeah, basically. Um, so my original concept was to uh, basically create an artistic version of the first measure notation measure of the musical piece that I was listening to. And I started using uh, clocks without arms and, you know, um, to denote the actual notes on the, you know, note chart and musical clefs. And so my original paintings, this charming time and that whole series were very much a lot of clocks and clock arms denoting uh, notes on this, on the, on the canvas, but painted in a very, you know, wild way. And so I was trying to find this relation between music and art. And um, over time, it's beca- it's become a little different. I'm not necessarily trying to mock up the first measure of, of, of uh, you know, the musical uh, score, but I'm trying to create music and art at the same time that there are, there are married, you know, through this app that we use called our Lupa. That app is amazing. Um, so listeners, what you do is you hold up the app to Serge's paintings and then it plays a piece of music through your phone. And Serge, is that the piece of music that you've composed specifically for that painting? And what comes first, the art or the music? Uh, usually music comes first, but, you know, I have been flipping that idea on its head recently. Uh, originally the music came first and I would try to kind of paint according to that. And then recently now I kind of do more freestyle painting and appropriate music that I have for it. They are all my compositions, yes. I was quite intrigued to know what sort of music it would be, whether it would be, you know, loud guitar with some of them, because some of them could represent an intense, loud piece of music. But the music was a lot more, uh, could I say, prettier or dreamier than I imagined, maybe. Would that be fair? Mm. Uh, some, I, there are some pieces. I mean, we've got a lot of pieces between, we've got over a hundred something pieces now, so half of which probably are sold. And the musical gauntlet is pretty wide. Um, ah. There are rock pieces in, in there, but probably none of the pieces at the gallery or, or majority of them. Uh, there are classical pieces, there are jazz pieces, there are experimental pieces, there are, you know, electronic pieces. So it's really it really has a lot to do with the visuals themselves. If the visuals are extremely crazy and wild and multicolor, then the music is usually more, you know, robust. And if the if it's more contemplative, then the music is such as well. Yeah. For you, is it music or is it art? What would be the priority? Or is it something that you just can't, you know, there's just not a number one. They always come together now for you. Now, what's the difference, really? I mean, like the way I look at it is we're u- utilizing our multiple senses to try to imbibe this creativity in whatever form it comes in. And the more senses we use, the more interesting it becomes in terms of surrounding our physical senses. So, you know, right now we're doing audio and we're doing visual, but imagine if we were able to smell, touch, mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, and, and have these other kind of olfactory senses um, in, engaged, um, it would be a much more surrounding experience, right? Oh, um, yeah. To me, to me, it's all the same. I mean, they, I, I don't prioritize one type of art over another. From listening to your music for years and reading about you and, and also seeing your art, I found it quite some of it quite raw and sort of quite emotional. And you have spoken about activism or that, that's what motivates you. Is there themes to the art and the exhibitions that you're showing? Absolutely. You know, I, when I paint, I'm not thinking of why I'm painting this way, what is coming out of me and why. It's something that you usually 
try to make sense of later in retrospect or maybe never make sense out of it, you know? I mean, it's really the same with music. For example, currently, you know, as an activist, I've been dealing with the Azerbaijani blockade of Nagorno-Karabakh and the Armenians living there, running out of food and medicine and all of that. Now, I haven't painted a painting about that, but it's at the back of my head because I've been doing interviews and what not having to do with trying to bring awareness to this humanitarian catastrophe. And so it's at the back of my head. So the colors I use, the strokes that I do, whatever I do is is associated with what I'm feeling even if I don't know what that is. It's just the mood or or yeah, it's almost subconscious. It is. Yeah, totally. You know, you're living that moment, it's at the back of your head and whatever you do is is associated and and it comes through emotionally from with the piece even if you're not cognizant of it. You being involved in or being very interested in Armenian politics that seems very logical because of where you come from but you spend a lot of time in New Zealand do you ever get interested or involved in New Zealand politics or activism here? Um I do you know um to a certain degree uh I you know I have become more uh more more centered on Armenia since the 2020 invasion by Azerbaijan and Turkey mm-hmm. of Artsakh and recently of Armenia So it's kind of taken up the majority of my activism because I feel like there's this issue that a lot of the world doesn't know about that that is important. I mean, um so that's a part of it as far as New Zealand activism, I'm I'm very aware of the 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 impacts of uh you know, the lockdowns and 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 a lot of, you know, we began with a lockdown that was uh in 2020 we were here for nine months mm-hmm. and and it was amazing i think it was it was great the way that the government handled it and then it just carried on too long as everyone knows and and it created you know a, a suffering of small businesses and the disconnect with the world in a way uh one of the reasons i called my exhibition kiwi and pangeas is kind of that it's uh you know i'm a kiwi and pangea you know the world as a friend of mine said last night the world is such a smaller place due to travel and communication and technology right mm. um we we can be isolated but we can't be isolated it's it's both simultaneously in a way um both as people and as a nation as a, as a country um so there are there are you know it, it's this interesting tightrope of how independent can we be in in a world system both geopolitically politically economically socially um and those are interesting thoughts in mm-hmm. you know and and that's kind of why i wanted to name the exhibition kiwi and pangea uh, pangea is just a moniker for the you know the whole world basically i'm using it as a you know simile for the whole world basically saying that you know so i'm a kiwi and pangea in in a way i'm isolated but in a way i'm not i mean i'm part of the full current of the world in every way and i feel and you know everything that's happening but i i also have this little plot where i feel as peaceful and beautiful and you know it's that question of how you know um how isolated are we how connected are we how isolated should be how connected we should be it, 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 we're dealing with all of this on a daily basis as 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 you know new zealanders so it's it's why i kind of named it that yeah what's your day like are you quite regimented do you sort of go to the studio at 9 and spend all day there my day is pretty you know my day is pretty interesting i i spend quite a bit of time with the family especially given that it's summer here in new zealand and our son is off school you know we um we've had friends visiting from the states for the holidays uh some of them had never been to new zealand so we've been taking them around and you know showing them our favorite places uh been working on the art of course i work on music i set up a new studio um so that you know cuz i finished a bunch of scores for a documentary series for netflix that came out Mm-hmm. uh one is uh made off that came out early january uh the monster on wall street made off uh, it's a pretty um popular seems to be a pretty popular docu series really um popular. i've also worked yeah. on yeah i've also worked on a few uh crime series um so um you know set up a new studio so i can continue working on new new uh scores as well and at sweet galleries in auckland and wellington you're going to be at both openings aren't you yes That seems pretty amazing. You may get lots of your music fans coming who haven't even seen art. I think that's what I love. You'll be introducing art fans to music and and music fans to art. 
Absolutely. I'm excited about it. I, I love that. I mean, we've, we've done gallery exhibitions in New Zealand before. Mm -hmm. We've gotten exactly that. We've gotten, you know, collectors to come in and discover the whole musical aspect that they had likely never experienced before and been like, wow, this is a really interesting dimension. And then we've got music fans that have come in and go, oh, you know, love your music. I would love to check out the art and, you know, kind of go around, you know, being able to download an app on your smartphone and being able to walk around the gallery and listening to each piece along with viewing it has been a more enriching experience. And people tend to spend more time in a gallery because of it, which may or may not work for a sweet gallery. I'm just kidding. Um, you know, yeah, but but uh, it's good. It's really good because there's this extra engagement. And I love seeing that. I love seeing people really listening to a painting and bobbing their head to it. You know, it's, it's a unique phenomenon. It's pretty cool. Often galleries are quite quiet places as well. You're bringing a whole new energy to the galleries. Yes, yes. I think, you know, it's it's been great. I mean, we've, we've held a number of exhibitions in New Zealand and in California. Yeah, so it's been an amazing experience. It's been really encouraging. And I love people coming in and, you know, just like enjoying the the art and the music and just hearing people's feedback and oh, i really love people making sense out of things you know like someone will come in and go oh i see this in in this painting and i'm like wow that's cool because i never saw it so <laughs> you know it gives me a new experience you know and, and that's what's beautiful about art you know i can't wait to see the exhibition in in full force with my apps and maybe i'll take my headphones so i can turn it up really loud in the gallery too <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, please come and um, come to the opening. We'd love to see you. And thank you, Charlotte. I really appreciate that. I have a have a wonderful day. Thank you again for your time and, and interest. I appreciate it.